Hey guys, welcome back. So if you remember about a month ago when I brought home that Tremec 3550 or the, the old 3550 upgraded version, which was the original TKO. So I bought that transmission as a basket case. Uh, well, I got it here on the bench. I got some updates for you. I'll bring you along. All right, all of the transmission parts have been disassembled and cleaned main case you should have seen the pictures before I'll snap it up here again uh, some of the issues that I had with it and since then I had my hand at uh, fixing it and welding in the cracks or welding up the crack and uh, for somebody who doesn't claim to be any kind of professional welder at all I think that turned out pretty great uh, certainly acceptable for me because I'm probably going to be the one that's going to use it so uh, had to totally V out the crack, build it back up. Welding cast aluminum is absolutely terrible because all the oil and the junk that keeps coming out of it, sand it down. I mean, it looks a little rough, but you put your hand over it and you just can't really feel it. It's just aluminum loves to show uh, scratches and highlights, but you know, leveled out nice and uh, certainly reusable. So that saved me 360 bucks, you know, just for uh, getting a new case just by fixing this one. So, case aside, all the rest of the broken parts uh, have come in. So, ordered from Hanlon Motorsports. You know, just got it any other day. And five parts, $743 for the parts and shipping to get it to me. So, this is not uh, T5 territory on price for repairs because I mean, even single gears, you can get like a single second gear. Third gear, even the Chinese aftermarket ones, maybe 60 bucks on eBay. Oh, excuse me, just had dinner. So, uh, but yeah, $175 for third gear, $148 for second gear. So there is quite a substantial jump up in price to repair these transmissions. So you gotta take that into account. If that's, uh, you're gonna buy a basket case or you're gonna fix yours what you got to work with so but most of the stuff is genuine uh, Tremec parts the only thing is not genuine Tremec is uh, our one two slider because the one two slider for the whole assembly is like three hundred dollars and this is just let me get it out of the box here how does this box work here it is actually have the middle hub in it So I have to build it with the keys and everything. But all you're doing is buying this from Hanlon. And they send it to you with the provisos that it may not fit the hub assembly because that's why they Tremec only usually sells it as a assembly. But you have to trial fit the one you have. If it doesn't fit, they said that I should send this back to them with this and they will give me a one-two slider that will fit this. Because this, according to handling, was 130, or sorry, 135 dollars versus 300 dollars. So that's the gamble you take just ordering this by itself. So all these brand new parts with the cost of the transmission, fixing the case, and my labor being free, I'm still going to be into this transmission about 11 or 1200 bucks. So. If you were to buy a transmission like this brand new, you know, I don't even think they, no, do they even sell new TKOs anymore? I don't know, they got TKXs, but this was a $2,800 transmission. So still worth it in my book, especially if I'm gonna use it myself. So if I wanna sell it, who knows if that's ever gonna happen, but uh, I do have a car that I can use this in back in the States and I may just save it to use that one day. But another thing I wanted to show you guys was the differences in why you would want a TKO transmission versus a T5. And everybody poo poos on the TKO transmissions because they don't shift well. And they don't shift as well as a T5 does. Let's just get that out of the way. Nothing shifts like a T5 does. T5 is a small, light duty transmission with lightweight oil in it and decent synchronizers that you can grab gears 
it, with moderate horsepower levels on a lightweight car and you have no problems if you want to go even crazy and shift, you know, power shift it. But a TKO is a different kind of animal. It is bigger, it is heavier duty. Think of it as a top loader transmission in a modern case with overdrive and the shifting mechanism built on the outside. Because the top loader is very compact. It's got the shift rails built into the side of the case and it is robust. Everybody loves top loaders. Even back in the day for NASCAR, I used them because they were heavy duty. Well, they use these standard brass blocker rings is what they call these. These aren't the synchros, they're blocker rings. This is from a uh, top loader. So I had this left over from a top loader rebuild. And this is the first gear from this TKO. Fits right on. And pull out of the box. Which one is this? This is the third gear. Top loader synchronizers are exactly the same as TKO synchronizers are. So they're not like, kind of like them. You see some of people referring to them as their TKO synchros are like top loader synchros. They are the same synchronizers. Right now there is a national back order on the ones for the TKOs. Even Hadlin didn't have any in stock. They had the carbon fiber, fine, the carbon fiber lined synchronizers. I didn't have any of the plain brass ones, but I just went on eBay, ordered from a top loader. Boom. So that's what's going together in the kit here in this transmission that I'm building up. So, but yeah, we have the 26 spline input for this uh, the TKO, and I'm at odds of whether I'm going to use this or not because years ago I upgraded the. Uh, the 3550 that I had in my 85 GT and I converted it to TKO specs and I bought a brand new 26 spline input shaft to install in the car and I still have the original input shaft out of that transmission and splines are still straight as an arrow this has been 142 60 foot in my 85 GT you know launching with both wheels in the air and I don't, you see, you hear people twisting, saying they twist on these and stuff like that and breaking them. I have not experienced that. I upgraded, hopefully before I ever got to that limit, but I have this to install in this transmission if I want to, if I, the application that I have this for, planned for is I have a 69 Fastback in the States that already has a top loader four speed in it. And if I ever want to put a, an overdrive in it, this is the easiest way to go about doing it and they are a direct swap. So I can think of installing this, swapping the bearing over and putting this in to this transmission. So, and to give you a, a sense of perspective on TKO versus T5 stuff. So here's a Fox body T5 input shaft. And you can see just how much robu more robust the gear surfaces are. It's probably an easy 60% bigger on the gear. So with substantially more power or torque holding power. And then if we want to talk about gear, I just pulled the, here's the third gear for the Tremec TKO. Here's the T5 third gear. So significantly more robust transmissions than T5s. And with the robustness, there's a lot of mass. And when you go to shift, there's a lot more mass to speed up and slow down with the synchronizers. So it's not going to shift as quickly as a small light T5 is going to shift. So you can build your car with a T5, shift with your gas pedal on the floor, power shifting, but you better make sure you're not making a total or a whole lot of power you better make sure the car is light and that it'll live. You won't be blowing these things apart. But you want to upgrade, you're going to upgrade to a TKO. 
It's not going to shift as quickly or as high RPM, but it's going to live. So, so with that, since this is going an old school car, it's going to live just fine behind an old uh, 351 Windsor, not shifting past by 6,500, 6, and it'll do just fine. So, uh, yeah, years ago, I wrote a, an article for now defunct uh, magazine. I'll put a link down in the description where it is as I built many of these transmissions in the past. So I've always worked with Hanlon. They've uh, never done me wrong with buying parts from them. They've always uh, been good to me. I don't get any deals. I don't get anything for, uh, for you know, pushing their, uh, their business or anything like that, but uh, they're just good people to work with. A uh, little mom and pop business, and that's what I like doing business with. So there's been other places that I've gotten parts online and through, and they just, they treat you like a number. And um, you know, I, I wouldn't purchase from them again if I had a choice. So I like dealing with Hanlon Motorsports. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start getting this thing cleaned up. I just gotta clean up the hardware still and start assembling it. I'm not gonna show you every little last bit of the process, uh, show you some highlights and little clips and pictures along the way. And uh, yeah, we'll get this thing together. Because honestly, I need to get all these parts and stuff out of the way and off the bench. So let me uh, disconnect you here, bring you along. So I got a box of stuff here, all clean, ready to go. Here's the tail shaft housing, all clean, ready to go. So picked up some, uh, some stuff today. 390 parts back from the machine shop got the heads the rods all rebuilt balanced ARP rod bolts and uh, you know, totally remanufactured you can see all the balancing marks on it crank is back balanced flywheel with it all the rotating assemblies got the pistons back uh, what do we got here I re uh, restored the rocker arms and the rocker shafts, these were looking horrible. I don't know what they did to them before. It's like they took original grungy rocker shafts and they put new shafts themselves in it and stuck all the dirty parts back on it. So it was kind of a cr really big crap show. Went and uh, refinished the faces. They were worn, they had like, you know, they had a uh, Big dimples from the ends of the valves in them, so true them all up to the same height. So when it all goes together, you set the valve train geometry and you set the preload by uh, custom length push rods. So when it's all mocked up and finally together, that's the last step for this engine project. So, and here is the block. So fresh bore and hone with torque plates, which is probably the only one in the UK. So I still have to talk to the guy that owns it about that because I purchased the torque plate for a significant personal expense to use with this engine just because I know FEs require a torque plate if you ever want to make any kind of power with it. The, the bores are too thin, threads go pretty deep in the block and you will get significant amount of blow by if you do not bore and hone these with a torque plate. So they went from 20 thou to 30 thou. They put a sleeve in the number five because of the corrosion in the bore. I didn't want to take everything out to 40. So one sleeve went from 20 to 30 and this block is ready to build. So just gotta do a significant amount of cleanup, a lot of casting flash. This is a pretty virgin block, but uh, yeah. Get them starting on this this weekend. Gotta get the 289 drained of fluids off the stand and out of here. I may just push it off to the side, deal with it later. But yeah, I gotta get rid of this exhaust. Set up, get the carburetor off, drain the fluids, and pickle it and get it ready for some long term storage. So, but there you have it. There's garage doings, and uh, I'm gonna be jamming on this tranny. So I'll see you guys in a while.